Thank you very much. Uh, can you hear me well? Yes. yes. Okay, so I will just... I think Sighild, if you could um, stop uh, screen share, then Dr. Afros can. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Can you see my slide now? Very well. Thank you. All right. Perfect. Thank you very much. So it's really my immense pleasure to be here today and to be able to have this opportunity from the ALS1 organizers to present our work from AC Immune on TDP43 antibody therapeutic program. And uh, basically today uh, I will take, uh, in this presentation, I will show you data that demonstrates that targeting a very specific aggregation prone domain of TDP43, which is in the C terminus of the protein, it uh, reduces uh, neuropathology and also confers neuroprotection in different models of uh, preclinical models of ALS and FTD. So without uh, any further delay, I, I think the first talk of this session from Professor Gittler was very, um, exhaustive and comprehensive in terms of the role of TDP43 pathology uh, in ALS, but also in other neurodegenerative diseases such as frontotemporal dementia, and also some of the clinical manifestations of Alzheimer's disease like late. And what we understand more and more uh, based on post-mortem studies is that uh, in both uh, ALS and for example, FTD, uh, the neuropathology of TDP43 starts in certain specific brain regions. And as the disease progresses, uh, the TDP43 pathology also is shown to spread to different regions of the brain. So this different staging, similar to Brax staging in Alzheimer's disease, it is very well correlated to the symptoms that we see in, in the clinic for, um, for these patients. and. Um, so the aim uh, of our uh, strategy is to develop an immunotherapy molecule, so a monoclonal antibody uh, that will prevent or slow down the progression of this pathology to different brain regions. What we also know from more recent research is that these TDP43 aggregates can also act on cells such as microglia. They can induce neuroinflammation and also impair the really essential function of these microglia, which is to clear out these misfolded proteins from the brain, uh, which is impaired in these patients. So with, with the immunotherapy approach, actually we can, as I will show you later, we can target both of these mechanisms. So we can um, neutralize these extracellular TDP43 species that infect healthy neurons in other brain regions, and also ameliorate microglial functions in order um, so that clear, they, can, they can clear out these uh, pathological aggregates in, in patients. And uh, there is more growing evidence in, that we are seeing now uh, for the presence of these seeding active extracellular TDP43, and this is uh, quite uh, recent data um, from the patient CSF samples, which shows, uh, so this is basically an amplification assay, where in, in these patients carrying specific mutations, uh, we can see these uh, amplification of TDP43 seeds uh, in term when we look at the fluorescent signal of these uh, recombinant TDP43 in this assay as compared to the controls. So if we can somehow um, neutralize these extracellular TDP43 species with a monoclonal antibody, we could uh, eventually slow down the progression of spread of this pathology. So for this, uh, at AC Immune, we used our superantigen platform, uh, which is a liposome-based uh, method uh, on which we can couple specific uh, peptides in different conformation uh, in order to generate monoclonal antibodies in mouse. So based on the knowledge of TDP43 structure, we really uh, tried to diversify 
the coverage of epitopes that we can generate for TDP43. And our key criteria was really to look at the biological relevance of these specific domains of TDP43 in um, mediating aggregation. So as you see that we have uh, a quite a lot of antibodies covering almost the entire region of TDP43. Uh, and we basically also looked at their target affinity and functional efficacy in different readouts that I will show you later. And in today's presentation, I will basically focus the data that we generated uh, with an antibody targeting this aggregation prone region of TDP43, uh, in addition to this nucleic acid binding region. So uh, ACI5891, it's a monoclonal antibody uh, uh, that was generated, which targets this extreme C-terminal uh, region of TDP43, which is involved in aggregation. When we uh, look by immunohistochemistry on different patient brain sections from FTLD, TDP, or ALS, uh, we can see that the antibody can bind to those to the pathological inclusions as shown by these red arrows, but also to the physiological form of the protein, which you saw in the previous talk is mainly localized in the nucleus here shown with the black arrows. And the antibody has extremely high binding affinity. So with the SPR technique, we measured an affinity of 182 picomolar uh, on aggregated TDP43. So really a, a very high affinity binding to the target which is, I think it's extremely important uh, uh, considering the brain pathology. So, and the second antibody that I, for which I would uh, show you the data is uh, ACI 5886. Uh, it's also a pan antibody. So you can see binding to both pathological and the new physiological forms. Uh, and it also has a sub nanomolar affinity. Uh, so the major difference being that this antibody binds in the nucleic acid binding region of TDP43. So we evaluated these two antibodies in various in vitro assays to see uh, their efficacy in either reducing TDP43 aggregation. So this is the first assay that we, uh, we looked at. Uh, so this assay is based on aggregation of recombinant TDP43 and we can monitor this in real time. And actually this was quite striking that the antibody uh, 5891 that binds to the extreme C terminus of TDP43, it completely inhibited the aggregation of TDP43 uh, as compared to an isotype control antibody or uh, the second antibody 5886 that binds to the nucleic acid binding region. So, and this inhibition of aggregation was quite nice uh, in a, and specific in a dose-dependent fashion. So we could really nicely see uh, complete inhibition at the highest concentration of the antibody that we used in this assay, allowing us to also calculate EC50. So we then went ahead and looked in a, in a more um, cell-based model. And for this, we used, um, FTLD TDP brain derived seeds. So these are um, insoluble brain extracts that we obtained from FTLD TDP postmortem brains. And the first question we asked was how these antibodies are uh, able to immunodeplete TDP43 present in those extracts. And uh, this is basically the Western blot showing the immunodepletion by the two antibodies. And on the right hand side, you can see the quantification of either the full length TDP43 or the specific C terminal fragments, which are very specific to the pathological form. And in both of them, you can see that uh, ACI 5891 that binds to the extreme C terminus was much more efficient in reducing or depleting these TDP43 as compared to the isotype control or the uh, nucleic acid binding uh, antibody. So we then transduced these uh, immunodepleted extracts in a hex cell model that expresses the cytoplasmic form of TDP43. And here, uh, this model is really nice because what you can see is that we can look at templated aggregation. So these seeds, when these are transduced uh, in, in these cells, they generate phosphorylated TDP aggregates uh, with the same phosphocytes as is described in the patients. And what was really uh, striking was that with ACI 5891 immunodepleted extracts, we significantly reduced uh, this templated aggregation as compared to the isotype control. 
So in both of these two in vitro assays, we saw this dif differential efficacy of the two antibodies, one binding to the C-terminal was more active. So we went ahead and evalu evaluated these two antibodies in two different mouse models of uh, TDP43. Uh, so the, and our main question was to really look at the neuropathology readout. So to look at TDP43 pathology uh, upon these uh, antibody administration. So uh, the first mouse model we looked was uh, the mouse model that was developed in the lab of Virginia Lee, which expresses a cytoplasmic form of TDP43 um, under the neurofilament uh, heavy chain promoter. And this leads to accumulation of phosphorylated TDP43 over time. It's a very aggressive mouse model. Um, however, it really allowed us to look at, neuro, uh, at the pathology of TDP43 in, in this. And what was again very striking was that uh, as we saw in, in vitro upon ACI 5891 treatment, we saw a very significant reduction in phospho TDP43 readouts, both by immunohistochemistry and by biochemi biochemical methods. And uh, this was not the case with the antibody binding to the, R, the nucleic acid binding region. And this we further, uh, confirmed by also using an assay that we developed at AC immune in order to quantify very specifically only aggregated TDP43. And uh, here also we saw a very significant reduction with ACI5891, uh, the antibody binding to the C terminus. So with this, we were very excited and we went ahead uh, with ACI5891, the C terminal antibody in the second mouse model which was also developed uh, in the lab of Virginia Lee, uh, which expresses the same transgene, but now uh, under a different promoter. So it's, um, the expression is a bit lower and the mouse model is a bit less aggressive. And uh, here, basically, the, the main difference is that the phospho-TDP43 pathology is really induced uh, when we inject these mice with uh, patient brain extracts carrying TDP43 seeds. So um, this model allowed us to basically look at, look at uh, two readouts, of course, the, the, the pathology itself, but also the toxicity that could be induced by injection of these brain extracts. And it was very striking that with uh, this uh, antibody treatment, we could not only reduce the phospho TDP43 pathology, but also rescue the, uh, the neurotoxicity, which is caused by the injection of these uh, FTLD TDP brain extracts in these mice uh, compared to uh, the non inoculated mice. So, this is actually quite clear when you look at this region of hippocampus uh, where we inject the material. So, there is a massive uh, neurodegeneration in vehicle treated mice, and we have a very nice rescue with our antibody uh, as compared to the isotype control shown here on the bottom. And uh, another key finding of this study was that uh, we included also an effector reduced variant of this antibody to, to be able to um, understand the, the effector requirement uh, in, in the monoclonal antibody for development. And we could see that uh, even though uh, this had some rescue, but it did not uh, achieve the full effect as with the full effector antibody. So we do need the effector function. And actually this basically led us to also hypothesize that there is uh, an involvement of microglia because uh, that's where the effector function of, of the antibody would, uh, would come into play. And so in both of these mouse models, we did look at microglia and what we found was that in both mouse models, there was either uh, in, an increase in the mean cell size or uh, overall IBA1 density. Um, so we were um, somehow with the antibody treatment, um, bringing the microglia into their hypertrophic states, which basically then results in the clearance of these immune complexes, resulting in, in the reduction of pathology that we see uh, in, uh, in the two uh, models. So finally, we also then confirmed uh, the role of these uh, microglia uh, or in a more relevant system. So this was, uh, from microglia that were derived from ALS patients. And actually these samples uh, were obtained uh, by our collaboration with um, people from Mass General, James Perry and Clotilde. So they were very generous to provide us uh, these uh, PBMCs that were isolated from uh, ALS patients. 
And what we could see here, uh, this is an assay that shows the uptake of immune complexes of TDP43, which are fluorescent, fluorescently labeled. And uh, as compared to an isotype control, when we add uh, our antibody together with those uh, labeled uh, TDP43, we see a significant uptake and phagocytosis of those uh, immune complexes by microglia. So this is a clear benefit for patients because uh, this would really and ameliorate the phagocytic functions of um, microglia to clear out uh, the, the pathology in, uh, in ALS, which is uh, impaired in the patients. So uh, with this, I come here on the summary slide that basically describes the mode of action of uh, our monoclonal antibody targeting the C-terminal region. So the antibody acts in the extracellular space, capturing those uh, TDP43 species and uh, resulting the, in the internalization of those immune complexes by FC-mediated mechanisms into the microglia uh, and their clearance. Uh, once this is happening, it's also preventing the infection of those uh, aggregates to the healthy neurons and thereby uh, would potentially slow down the progression of the disease and also slow down the loss of function that could be induced in these healthy neurons upon, uh, upon induction of pathology. So we are quite excited uh, with this molecule. And the last thing that we wanted to address was the safety of, of immunotherapy. And actually for this, we did a very simple in vitro uh, experiment using uh, uh, cell lines. And what we could uh, see, show, demonstrate that uh, with antibody treatment, we do not alter the intracellular expression of TDP43 per se as compared to a positive control, which is a siRNA. And more importantly, we do not alter any of the splicing functions, uh, which is a really essential function of this protein uh, of the downstream target genes, as we saw also in the first talk. So this data very nicely supports also the safety of targeting uh, TDP43 with a monoclonal antibody because it does not perturb these essential physiological functions of the protein. So uh, with this, I would like to just uh, summarize this uh, preclinical data. Uh, so we have uh, generated uh, monoclonal antibodies spanning the entire region of TDP43. And we are also um, going forward with some of vectorizing these antibodies uh, in future. I did not have time to, to discuss on that. Uh, the key finding was really the C-terminal domain binder that shows e efficacy in vitro and also in the in vivo models. And we see clear benefits to the cells that are derived from uh, patients. So with this, uh, we are bringing the molecule forward and we have initiated the IND enabling studies. And um, we are very excited to take this molecule forward in development uh, to first in human. So with this, I come to the end of this uh, talk. Um, I would like to thank our collaborators at UPenn, Professor Virginia Lee, um, uh, Dr. Manuela Neumann in, in Germany, uh, and also our collaborators at Mass General for all the precious samples that have been provided for this research, including our brain banks. And uh, thank you all for your attention, and I will be happy to take any questions. Thank you very much. Very, very, very interesting. We have a couple of questions in the chat. Uh, Fernando Vieira asked, does binding of ACI5891 to TDP43 cause any steric hindrance of TDP43 binding by anti-phospho-TDP43 antibodies? So uh, actually it does not because uh, in this slide uh, where I where I showed you the, the staining, we also did co-localization. Um, co-staining with a phospho 409 for 10 antibody and we could uh, we could see the signal co-localizing uh, for both the antibodies yeah. so we did we do not have a competition by 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 this assay yeah interesting yes Thank you. by by immuno uh, staining yeah. yeah professor Giampaolo merlini asked is this a humanized igg1 monoclonal antibody so the data that i showed you today um, is on mouse IgG2A antibody. 
and uh, what I so it has the full effector function, so the equivalent of human IgG one. But what we have done in the meantime is we have humanized uh, this antibody successfully on an IgG one backbone as well. See, thank you. Uh, the question has been asked by Yu Shen Sun: Were the safety studies conducted in vitro or in vivo? So this safety study that I showed you, uh, this was conducted in vitro. So this was um, uh, on, on, on cells, uh, wild type cells, where we incubated them with antibodies and uh, looked at different readouts in terms of protein expression and also the splicing functions of TDP43. Uh, we haven't done yet this in vivo, but uh, I, 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 I would expect similar results in vivo as well. Thank you. And just another a question or two, some of the patients that we see, admittedly a small number, have mutations in the very region of the TDP43 protein, which is targeted. Do those interfere with binding? No, uh, so actually we did this comprehensive analysis. So we did uh, produce all the um, mutant forms of TDP43, I think around 50 of them, uh, to make sure that this antibody still binds to all the the mutant forms of the protein. So we do retain, retain the binding. Thank you. Um, the question is asked by uh, Hyun Yang Chang. Uh, can you explain the mechanism by which the microglia recognizes the antibody bound extracellular TDP43 in the proteinopathy? Right, so I think um, it's, it's a very good question because uh, on one hand, uh, microglia can be primed by aggregated proteins like TDP43 itself, causing them to go in, uh, into a, a neuroinflammatory state. Uh, whereas with the immune complexes, there are specific receptors on microglia. These are FC gamma receptors. So these are the ones uh, that are bound by immune complexes on microglia that leads to their internalization and degradation into those uh, lysosome compartments. Thank you. Well, that's very, very interesting. We we'll look forward to hearing, hear, hearing more about the development of this product. Thank, thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, we're, we're now 